Hey everybody, this is TJR hanging out here with Superfan. Hey everybody. And the little green guy. And I'm a little late to the party. I left a video message the other day, a couple days ago, uh, when this was delivered. Uh, this, this released on the weekend and I couldn't be at home uh, when this delivered. In fact, I had to have it delivered to a relative so that I could pick it up later. But... I am back now, and I can finally... Uh, it is later, and you have it. Yes, that's right. It is later, and I have it. And so today I'm just going to do the unboxing. A uh, quick little thing I want to make very clear here. This is not a review. And I say this because I've done unboxings, and people have said to me, great review, thanks. It's like, no, that's not a review. This is just an unboxing. This is just looking it over, kind of taking the first look at it. Uh, with these Beatles... Super Deluxe box sets. I always start with the unboxing, then I review the remix, then I talk about the uh, bonus material and the book. And so this is part one, which is gonna be the unboxing here. In the past, with these Super Deluxe editions, I have always opted for the CD version. And one of the reasons for that is one, the CD version is cheaper, two, um, they always come with a Blu-ray, which the final versions don't come with. Um, three, I've always said I don't need session tracks, demos, all of that on vinyl, even though I love vinyl. And what I've always done is after I've purchased the CD set, I follow up a little later on and I purchase the remix on vinyl. But in this case, I broke tradition and I'm going for the vinyl box set. And the reason I did that is because, first of all, this time around, there's no Blu-ray. So that played into the decision. But also, so did the fact that this includes, and this is the first time they've done this, a new analog transfer uh, from the mono mix. And um, I've heard some reviews, and so far, everybody's saying that this new transfer of the mono mix from the analog tapes beats the one from the mono box set, which I think was around 2012 again, 2014, roughly right around there. Um, so I have to admit, had the Blu-ray been included in the CD version, it would have been a hard choice to make as to which way to go. But the fact that they didn't include the CD, the fact that they included this um, new analog mono transfer, and the fact that all of it was half-speed mastered, um, made me decide, okay, I'm gonna go with the vinyl set this time around. So, pretty heavy. Here's the box that comes with it, uh, inside a box, I should say. There we go. Wow, okay, pretty heavy. But of course, it's vinyl, it's not a CD this time around. So yeah, it's gonna be heavier. So yeah, box within a box, well packaged. I always show these things so that you can kind of get an idea and, and by this, the, by yeah. the way, be, you're like waving the knife around in Burger's face. You're freaking him out. <laughs> Are you scared, little guy? I'm sorry. Anyways, yeah, we got to be careful. He's still a kid. But he's what? He's what? Uh, how old is he? 52 now. 52 now. Yeah, he's still a little, he's still a little kid. So here we go. Um, so here is the box. Oh, wow. I, you know, and people tell me that Amazon doesn't know how to package. I mean... I've only had one bad experience with Amazon. They've always done a good job, but here, look, look at this. Well, I don't know if that part is Amazon's packaging, I'm guessing. Oh, this is probably, you're right. This is probably um, it, Apple Core, their packaging, just whoever they work with for their distribution on this. Because yes. look at this. They then put it in this. So that's, that's this is really good. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And let's set, wow, I guess set two boxes aside. Can I? Hand that to you. Thanks. Okay, so now, actually, before you close it, I guess I should put, pull it out. Oh, here we go. Let's pull it out. Yeah, I know. It's I can feel the the angels singing. I hear the angels singing. Here we go. Let's pull that out. Feel the angels singing. Oh man, that doesn't sound good, does it? Here we go. Let's show it to you. Ready? One, two, three. There Looks like it is. Revolvers. Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, 
right, let's uh, look at the hype sticker here. The Beatles Revolver, Super Deluxe 4LP Edition. New stereo mix by Giles Martin and Samuel Kell. Two session LPs of outtakes, rehearsals, demos, and studio chat. Original 1966 mono LP, 180 gram vinyl, plus seven inch bonus EP with paperback writer and rain in new stereo mixes and original 1966 mono. 100 page hardback book with a forward by Paul McCartney, extensive historical and track by track information, rare photos and memorabilia. And I actually have heard other people's reviews of the remix prior to doing my own. Used to be I would not do that because I don't want to influence in my own. But I actually, it's given me, hearing what other people say has actually helped inspire some thoughts of my own. And I will tell you that while I've been away, I did listen to it on streaming, the remix. And I did some comparison. I created a playlist of the 2009 remaster and did some comparisons, you know, I was only listening on earbuds, but I'm still reserving judgment until I sit here at home, listen to it on my speakers, and you know, also uh, listen to it on nicer headphones than just my earbuds, which when I travel, uh, when I'm away, they're, they're fine, but they're nothing like, you know, it's like, what it is is I don't travel around with nice headphones or earbuds. I want only to travel around with stuff that if I lose it, it's like, okay, no big loss, you know. Um, so let's unwrap that, take the shrink wrap off of here. There we go. Now that I've pulled off the shrink wrap, I have to admit, uh, this looks even nicer. Wow. Yeah, the reproduction on this is amazing looking. Um, there's almost, and maybe it's just the, the awe of the new, but there's almost this kind of like, it almost looks somewhat layered or three-dimensional, even though it isn't. Hard to put my finger on what it is exactly. Um, very high gloss here, matte, more matte finish here. And I think that might be what it is. Yeah. And so here, let's go ahead and pull these out, I guess. So I'm gonna guess here on the top, probably on the top, is the new stereo remix here. I'm gonna guess that's this right here. Let's take a look here. Wow, yeah, they've really copied this down to the last detail. Holy cow. Use new Emitex. Hopefully I've said that right. Use new Emitex record cleaner. The use of new Emitex provides an effective means of ensuring groove cleanliness. So essential to good reproduction. The regular use will lengthen the life of the record and reduce the static charge. Available from record dealers. Right there. Okay. And again, very high gloss here, just like the, the box on the cover. More matte finish here on the back. Let's pull it out here. Parlophone label. And of course, polyline sleeve. So paper outside, polylined on the inside. Let's take a look here. Pull it out here. I have heard some people on the internet say their copy was dusty and dirty, had debris, so it had to be cleaned. Others say that it was absolutely perfectly clean. Um, I'd say this side looks pretty clean, though I see some dirt. This more side is much dirtier, side one. There's a fair amount of debris, so I will, I will, you know, give it a cleaning before I play it the first time. The vinyl has some real heft to it. There we go. I'm not gonna pull out each one, just this one, just to kind of take a look. Get an idea here. Very nice. I know that for a lot of people, um, there are a lot of people who, some of them lean towards Revolver as their favorite Beatle album, some Rubber Soul. I've never leaned to either one as my favorite. I tend to lean more towards Sgt. Pepper and Magical Mystery Tour as my favorites. I know I'm going to get a few people who will say, Magical Mystery Tour is not an album, it's a compilation. Whatever. Um, here we go. Maybe now that you've said it for them, they won't need to say they it. They won't need to say it, but... Uh, I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't understand the history behind all that. So to me, Magical Mystery Tour was an album. And it always will be. Okay, so here is the Session Tracks LP. And there's some, okay, yeah. 
I kind of felt this as I pulled it out. Inside is the seven inch. We're gonna look at this in just a moment here. Let's set it down. But let's look at this wonderful cover here for the Session LPs in the back. And let's look at the gatefold here. And I've seen this online. I've seen other people show theirs. But looking at it now in person, I have just, wow. Just the level of quality and reproduction here. Um, and I know I just said reproduction, yeah. I mean, of course, this more than I mean this because this is different looking. And uh, let me just pull one out anyways. Oh, okay. The Parlophone label is a little bit different here. It looks more like a, um, I can't think of the word right now, test pressing. That's the word I'm looking for. It looks more like a test pressing label. Yeah, it does. Okay, so this is the, the seven inch here. Now this is actually in like a cardboard sleeve. And I'll admit, look at the back here. It Again, has more ads on it. use the new Emitex cleaning material. Wonderful. Important, you guys say this, important. Take good care of this high quality EMI record. Check your stylus regularly. A worn stylus will give poor reproduction and may damage the record permanently. Go. Read the record mail. Look at this. A lively illustrated monthly review of the latest pops full of pictures and information about your favorite artists. The we're going to get mail? it. The okay. record mail. We're going to get that. Yeah, we're going to subscribe to it. Yeah, I'm sure they'll still honor that. How much is it? <laughs> it doesn't say. Anyways, um, but yeah, this is the seven inch. It is not polyline though. So while this sleeve is just killer to look at, looks great. Um, I'm going to get a little, you know, uh, anti-static sleeve. I have, I have a few. I have some for 45s. I know it's a seven inch, but I'm calling it a 45. Yes, 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 yes. Record fans can be so particular. Anyways, though. Um, but yeah, this looks really great. I've never been disappointed with the quality of any of these Beatle reissues. The 2009 remasters, both the stereo, uh, the stereo reissues and the mono box set. The only thing I would have complained about was the stereo box was pretty worthless, but the actual reissues themselves were, looked great and they sounded great too. And so here now is the mono LP. Oh, wait a minute. This isn't right. What's they, that? The record mail is not in print anymore and hasn't been since 1965. Really? Oh my gosh. The nerve. What a ripoff. Here they are advertising it and they won't let us do it. What a ripoff. You know someone's gonna take that joke seriously. I'm, I can't wait. When someone does, just say busted. Um, anyways. Everybody mock them. Yes, everybody mock them, please. Superman, Superman, Superfan made a joke in one of my previous videos and so many people took it seriously that it wasn't funny. It, trust me, it wasn't. What was it? Oh, I'll, I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. But everybody you know. wants to know. Yeah. No, it was the joke about, about Yellow Submarine, about the uh, the acoustic, you know, work demo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, just, you were just joking. and But there were people who took it very seriously. And it's like, come on, people, lighten up a little. We're just having a little bit of fun here. Let me put these back in the box here, and then we're gonna take a look at the book. Okay. And like I said, I'm gonna come back in the next video, and I'm gonna talk about, is there a, is there something in here? No, okay. Just my imagination running away with me. I thought there may, might have been something else in there that was blocking the, putting these back in here. Um, yeah, it's the, the seven inch. Well, the seven inch was in here. It was, it was, it was inside. I know, but it's catching on here. Huh? Go ahead. Well, give me the whole oh, thing. Oh, sure, sure, sure. 
There you go. Okay. So let's look at the book while Superfan plays with the seven inch. And, uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. So many jokes. So I know, many so fun. many jokes that we could be making right now, but we're not going to because we want to keep our family rating. And uh, here we go. So, wow. Now, first of all, thank you for that. Just quick... slide it in as it is right okay. now. Okay, I'm going to do that. Uh, Let me see. Yeah, it went in perfectly. Thank you. Uh, so I don't know if you can see this here, but there is so many jokes. Very hard to see here, but there is this like s just very slight embossment here of hair, like the hair you see on the cover. We'll open this up here, and uh, let me try to show you some of this here. Uh, in fact, let me read the, this front uh, page here. Um, Ford, Paul McCartney, Giles Martin, introduction. Questlove, the drummer of the Roots, has written an article here called Evolver. Kevin Howlett then writes The Road to Revolver, track by track, the cover, and Revolver Reception. So those are the chapters in the book here. And, okay, let's, uh, let's show you some pictures here. Go. And let's see here. I don't think I've ever seen this picture of Paul McCartney. Maybe you have. No. You ever seen that one? No. I don't think so. I didn't think so. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, look at this picture here of uh, George Martin. Look at that. And they said he didn't have a sense of humor. Here, I'll show you real quick. Him being silly. And <laughs> I this picture here, let me show it again here. I have to show it again while I talk about this. I remember my dad um, back when he was still alive, um, I had two nephews. They're adults now, but when they were kids, he loved to do something that would embarrass them in public, just for laughs. And one thing he did, I remember one time he came out, you know, they, they arrived with my brother and they got out of the car and he came outside to greet them and he was wearing this big sombrero. That's what I thought of when I saw this here. He ran his big sombrero. <laughs> and he did it deliberately just to uh, just to embarrass my well, nephews. Didn't he wear his naval bell bottoms with it? Yeah, he would wear his... Because he was a Navy man. Uh, he served in World War II. He served in Korea. And he would put on his Navy bell bottoms just to embarrass them as well. That's the only with time he put... With a giant sombrero. With a giant sombrero. Oh, wow, look at this. Look at this picture here. Um... Group photo. I don't think I've ever seen this photo, these photos before. No. Yeah. But, I mean, when they do photo sessions like that, they just shoot and shoot and shoot. And yeah. Shoot. Yeah. And so here's chapter one here. Evolver. Uh, written by Questlove. Who is an amazing drummer. I believe I've seen these photos before or a variation of them. The Road to Revolver, the next chapter. And what I'm likely to do, of course, is just simply read the book, especially the track by track while I'm listening to the session tracks, because I'm sure they will give more insight. Look at this shot here. Here's McCartney in the studio with his bass, and he's got a copy of Aftermath, the UK edition of Aftermath. Of course, he wouldn't be holding the U.S. version, that's for sure. 
I have uh, Aftermath in mono on CD and in stereo on vinyl. And of course, handwritten lyrics. Okay, yeah. These are, this is the whole track by track. It goes over every single track. I will love reading that. I always love reading those. This takes up the majority of the book, uh, the whole track by track information. And even track by eight, and they do the same for Paperback Writer and Rain. Real quick, I know a lot of people commented on the fact that those four tracks that are on the seven inch were put on a separate CD mm -hmm. versus just adding them to one of the, to like what, some of the session track CDs. And that's basically to make it feel like you're getting more for your money by saying that's an extra disc. And I see that point. I really do. Um, there was a Black Sabbath box set that I picked up a while back, which if you bought the vinyl version, which I didn't, it came with a 45 uh, that had a 45 version of one of the songs and another song on it. And so on the CD box set, they just included an extra CD as like a CD single, which was to me kind of pointless. You should have just put it on the CD with the, with the live material that was included. But it but, makes it sound more. Yeah, exactly. It makes it feel like you're getting... It's, it's, I guess it's supposed to make you feel like you're getting more for your money. But honestly... Um, it's it's kind of like the little bitty chiclets versus the big chiclets. Yeah, yeah. I agree. It, they shouldn't do it that way on the CD versions. I get it on the vinyl versions, you know, giving to put it on a 7-inch. I get that. That's cool. Here are some pictures here. I don't think I've ever seen these before. Two group photos. Really nice. There we go. And let's see what else. Oh, interesting. Okay. This is on the cover, but look at this. May, I, I haven't read any of this yet, so I'm guessing this was maybe some kind of alternate version of the cover they were considering. This is led, done like a comic strip. And, of course, if you know me, you know I'm into comics, and so this, like, intrigues me. Oh, there's even more of it. Look. Maybe this wasn't just the cover. Maybe this was, some, I don't know. I'm going to be curious to know what was the, the thought process behind this. What was this about? I've never seen this before. But yeah, we've got a whole you little like. You have to read the book and see. Well, yeah, of course, of course. But I'm just, you know, I'm not going to do that right now. But there is literally this whole comic book story here. Illustrated. This is wonderful. I think you should do story time. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, no, this is, I mean, yeah, there's more of it here. There's. Yeah, I'm going to be curious to know. I mean, of course, I'm going to read all of this, but I'm be curious to know what the story is behind this. I've never seen any of this before. Nobody has brought this up in their unboxings. Take a look at that. So, yeah, I'm going to definitely be talking about this when I come back and talk about the session tracks in the book. And this is, of course, the last chapter, Revolver Reception. There we go. Mono and Stereo in 1966 track listing. Okay, a little bit on that as well. They don't mention that as a chapter, but it is there. And let's see, anything else here I want to point out? Okay, and then the rest is credits. And yeah, wow. Yeah, well-made book, you know. Uh, like I said, I've never been disappointed with any of these sets. They've always been high quality. The books have always been loaded with great information and excellent photos. This appears to be no different and definitely surprised by that comic strip in there. Um, so yeah. Um, they put it in there just for you. That's right. You're they the did. only one that got it. That's why nobody else showed it. Exactly. They did it just for me, specifically in this one, which they knew I was gonna buy and then, of course, they shipped it out here. Of course, yeah, of course. There's no other explanation than that. That's why they sent you that email saying that it was going to be delayed. Exactly. <laughs> I heard a lot of people had their sets uh, their sets delayed. And I got an email, too, saying mine was going to be delayed by one day. But a lot of people said their sets were delayed for, like, a week or so. Uh, that Robert told me that with his CD set that it was going to be delayed by almost a week. In fact, I need to send him a text and see if he got his. He got the CD set. Uh, so I guess there were some delays, but that's not the reason why I'm late with this here. Uh, I was basically away. We went to Tennessee, 
and um, we went to Memphis and Nashville. Uh, and we visited a lot of music history, Sun Studios, Graceland, Stax Records Museum. We also went to the Smoky Mountains. Smoky Mountains, Country Music Hall of Fame, and, um, and a couple others. And we'll probably talk about some of that in a future video, some of these music sites that we saw, and uh, uh, give some, some feedback on that for you all. But uh, yeah, a lot of music history we saw over the last week or so, an awful lot of music history. And a lot of that music history kind of reinvigorated me into wanting to pick up my guitar and play again. I've been only playing piano now for months and months and months and months and months. That's all I've been playing. I haven't really had any desire to touch my guitar. Um, so anyways, beautiful set. Beautiful set. And so first step is to start listening now to the stereo mix. And I've heard it on streaming, but it's not the same as sitting down and listening to it at home and uh, listening to it on uh, your own system, on good headphones, and comparing back and forth between the 2009 remaster and this new stereo remix. So that's the first thing. And uh, I'll come back as soon as possible, hopefully within the next couple days before the weekend or by the weekend with my review of the stereo remix and my thoughts on it. So that's the unboxing. Hope you enjoyed that. And um, we will uh, see you very soon. As always, if you like these videos, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the bell notification icon. Uh, that always helps out this channel a great deal. Uh, of course, there's also our patron supporters who help, who help a great deal, even more so. And that's why patron supporters receive uh, extra weekly videos that are not available here on the channel. They get a, they get extra videos every an extra video every Sunday, and sometimes I'll throw in some extra stuff as well on the side. But um, anyways, though, um, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you sticking around to the end, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.